Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever space and time you're watching this. You might be watching this on the NASA spaceship, whatever you're doing. Uh, obviously, I'm Jack. Over there is Ben. But also, we have a new member of Theorycraft. And he's not, exact, he's not exactly human. His name is Little Boris. See, look at this little guy's right here. He's even got the motto, let's get ready to run. He knows the game. He knows he keeps it real 100%. And basically... He's going to be helping us out with a few little videos. We're probably going to look a bit nuts while we do this live at the minute, but I'm going to ask him a question in just a second when I introduce the topic and so on. So with the topic of today's video, uh, it's going to be something which is very near and dear to my heart. I've been a gamer since I was a little kid, and we've seen multiple games that have uh, spawned different kinds of films. Some more questionable than others, some absolutely god-awful, some were a very good attempt, and some were pretty damn good. But obviously, this is Theorycraft, we're into the nitpicky here, and the criticizing is intense, so we keep that 100 as well. So, we're going to get into games, into movies, what things could have been done better, what films in from games need to be done, and overall, the future of them. Is there any kind of future in that? So, Boris, I need to just ask you a question quick, quickly. Uh, what do you think of today's topic? Jesus Christ, you guys are such plonkers. No, keep, keep that filthy, disgusting freaking language to yourself. Look, just, sit, just sit down on my shoulder and just be a good boy, okay? Yeah, no, anyway, I'm sorry. He's got, he's got a bit of a potty mouth. I'm very sorry. Yeah, nice way to introduce yourself. But anyway, into the topic of the games and so on. Uh, obviously, we've seen some very cool ones. See some very questionable ones, which we're going to get into right off the bat. So, Ben, what is the first slide that we've got? So, the first live adaptation that we have on our list today is Street Fighter. Now, <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> uh, damn, indeed. Damn, 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 damn. <laughs> I mean, as a whole, this movie. It, it was pure 90s cringe because it was just the days of where CGI had only just existed. Nobody knew in terms of how to actually key things up or actually knew what they were doing in terms of CGI. They just thought, oh, we can add explosions. Well, making explosions. And that's where it all goes wrong. Well, if there's lots of explosions, it makes lots of money. <laughs> debatable. Very, then... very much debatable. <laughs> well... At the end of the day, Street Fighter will always forever be one of the many cringeworthy action movies of the 90s that had zero logic to it whatsoever. I mean, the fact that they actually stayed true to the costume designs for the game, I was quite impressed with because the main factor for the majority of games, even to modern day, is they can be a bit sexist, both for male and female characters, because that's just the way it is. It's just people's fantasy and believing how the human race should appear in an action-themed genre. But the problem I find most of all, I can never remember the actor's name, but whoever the hell played the Baron for the Street Fighter... His eyes pop out so much that I swear, if he sneezed, they would actually come out of his skull. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> it was quite an iffy game, Street Fighter, regardless, because it was quite obvious that the guy was meant to be German, he was meant to be a Nazi, it was meant to be very Third Reichy to a degree. Yeah. Yeah, not, not sure how that will fly in today's world, though. Well, this is it. I mean, I doubt that they would ever make a remake of this, if they could, because there are so many over-the-top sexist parts within the actual thing itself. There's a lot of hit and missness within the actual theme of the film. I mean, the thing that I find most hilarious of all is that they spend the best part of the at least 80%, if not 90% of the movie, before they actually get to the actual look and the style and the point of the movie being related to the game yeah mind you i think the poster of like the uh, the poster that i send you of john claude van damme like definitely just it just proves that i mean just i played street fighter only a few times i was more into the kind of mortal combat 
but especially now the Mortal Kombat's like gone all gory and everything, it's absolutely wicked. But uh, adapting these things into films is definitely difficult. And here we go, look at yeah. that! It's like stereotypical American, isn't it? <laughs> it's just, it's missing. Well, I mean, it's got one massive explosion in the background, but it's missing lots of mini explosions as well around the rest of it. I mean, it's kind of ironic that they got such a big, musty dude to play the main Antiphonist character that's meant to be an American when he's not actually American himself because it's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah. Because he's not Austrian. Where is he from? I can never remember. Is, isn't he from Germany? I can't remember. Yeah, he's not from the same district as Ar Arnie, though. Like, he's not Austrian, but he is German descent of some kind. Yeah. But the thing is, this movie, not only does it have him, it's also got the actress Ming-Na Wen, who played Agent May in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but also is in The Mandalorian at the moment, which I really need to start getting into. But, most of all, it's got Kylie Minogue. Who... Oh, what, what, what do you call her? I call her Kylie Minogue because there used to be a <laughs> there used to be a TV series here in the UK called My Parents Are Aliens, and the dad alien could never call her Kylie Minogue. He had an absurd obsession with her and called her Kylie Minogue, and I keep to that to this day, which a lot of people think, "What the hell am I on?" But that's me in general, which is why we have this channel. Of course, of course. <laughs> but Kylie Minogue. It made me laugh that she actually has a part in this film, not because she's known as a pop star. Obviously, I knew her very first career was an actress in Home and Away. Or was it Home and Away or Neighbours? It's one of the two Aussie programmes. I think it might be Home and Away, but don't quote me on that. But it's just so funny that Cardi Minogue is this five foot nothing woman who has next to no fighting skills whatsoever. And then you've got everybody else in the entire movie who kicks out like every single second of the movie and she's five foot tall and she's like i think they even have to give her a box at the end of the movie to stand on so she's like reasonably in camera height compared to everyone else yeah 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 but i just oh it's so bizarre this entire movie because the the game itself is not really one that makes sense at all. But again, this is games. They never have a full logic to it because it's video games. At the end of the day, you beat the bad guy and that's it. Like, there's nothing more to it. But then yeah. we also have another 90s cringeworthy film. I've not seen it. Jack knows of it. And it's Mortal Kombat. Yeah, if I think if I remember correctly, the actor that played Darth Maul, Ray Park, was in this as well. Oh Christ! Because he was one of the uh, what are they called. I'm not sure if this is what they called. I think it was one of the ninjas, like Shadow Ninjas. I can't remember what they're called. One of the warriors, or whatever you want to call it. But it's the look on all of their faces. I don't know if it's because they're miffed off because they don't enjoy being part of the movie or whether they just got told they have to look deadly serious. Well, when it comes to Mortal Kombat, it's the most basic kind of fighting game format there is. All you got to do is just be the other one with your powers or fighting skills. That's basically it. It's the most basic yeah. format you've got. But when you like trying to adapt something like that to a real life film is really difficult. But especially if like there's a lot of people who are fans of the Mortal Kombat game. And there's, like I say, with any kind of video game that goes into movies, there's only so much that fans are going to accept and allow and so much change. And are you going to change it to the point where it becomes a different movie entirely? Which I think this is that's the mistake and that's the route which a lot of these have gone down. That's true. I mean, given the fact that there has been whispers online of a Mortal Kombat movie coming out either next year or the year after... It, I am kind of curious how it would work in modern day. I don't think it can unless you set it in maybe a alternative, alternative, al alternative, bomb. alternative reality, like it's a alternative reality based game inside the real world. You could do something like that with like virtual reality, I suppose. It's yeah. a bit. I mean. When you try and make these things too real, it does not work. I'm sorry, it never will. 
I mean, I think the thing is, back in the 90s, and it will carry on forever, because the thing is, whenever there's one movie that does really well, everybody likes to copy and paste the same genre to try and milk the money. And I think because Karate Kid was such a big hit back in the 90s, late 80s, Mortal Kombat tried to piggyback off that idea and obviously failed, because if it was such a big movie, then they would obviously play it on every single movie streaming service you can imagine but yeah yeah i've never i knew of it but i've never seen much of it because it must be that terrible <laughs> because, well i mean if it was such a good movie you would have loads of fan folk all obsessed about it but i had seen next to nothing in terms of people being obsessed over it yeah but then to be fair we have had a few things in one day like the past what 10 years where they've tried to redo some games or even attempted some games as movies i mean for the fact that we got an assassin's creed movie despite Ooh. that it it's a it's a bit of a hit and miss movie like it tries its best don't get me wrong like i've played the games to a degree and i understand the plot in itself yeah me but... i'm a, I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of these games but this is why we had to bring this up today, because Jack knows more of it than I do. And this is why we've got the timeline here to a degree as like the different assassins and where it's sort of, is it chronologically in that order there? Or is it just the different types of assassins we got? Uh, let me see. You got Connor, you got Altair. No, that's not in chronological order, but that's just all the uh, different assassins. Incarnations. Which you've got. So you had like the main three, which was the Altair Ezio story. And then after that, it kind of went into uh, went into the kind of Native American sort of 1700s kind of style. Then it went into the French uh, Revolution at the time. And then it goes back into the Odyssey, which is in Egyptian times. So if you don't know of Assassin's Creed, they have a basically a tool, which is the Animus, which it allows you to relive the memories of your past ancestors. And the premise behind these games is to collect the pieces of Eden, which eventually being, are being used for a, well, obviously for evil means. And so they have that chair called Anonymous. And so when it comes to this, it's something which, when it comes to the gameplay and all the cutscenes and everything, just one game, I think it was just Assassin's Creed 2, lasts for about is it 16 hours, something like that? And then you have the film with Michael Fassbender where they attempted it, they tried, but it was more kind of inspired by Assassin's Creed. So they did have the Animus, but they made an Animus like a virtual reality kind of thing, which was kind of cool. New take mm. on it. That was, that was kind of cool. But then you didn't have any recognisable characters that were in the game's timeline. So you had a completely different character, which, oh, what was he called? Aguilar, that's it, who was Spanish, and it was back in the 1600s, around the same time as Ezio, I think. And so you had that. So it's not based on Altair, Ezio, any of the um, assassins which are in the games. So for me, it was more kind of inspired by Assassin's Creed. So you have the same kind of premise, but you change like, the plot. And mm. the only pieces that they kept were sort of the animus and the pieces of eden but when it comes to assassin's creed it's not really something that in my opinion that you can do for a film because it's just it's as broad as the day is long there's so much that you can fit into only two hours which i felt like it, the film just felt so rushed and unfinished for me i, th I think that's the biggest issue in terms of any adaptation that's based on a video game because there are so many incarnations for most games. There's about probably five games minimum. And trying to work in certain stories, because each game has its own tone or story to a degree, even though it's yeah. the same plot in a sort of rough idea, it's hard to try and translate that to a smaller scale, which is why, again, it's when it comes to down when we do stuff on comic book movies where... It's the same issue. Like they try to squeeze in as much as they can, but then chop off these little bits thinking it's not significant enough, but it all adds up towards the end. Yeah, with the point of the games, every little thing in the game 
has a meaning, especially with Assassin's Creed. I'm a big lover of Assassin's Creed. I've played nearly all the games, but there's only so much that fans are going to accept and will accept a certain degree of change, which they obviously got to adapt it to a movie. But mm. with that, with Assassin's Creed, it's there's not a lot you can change. Like everything is kind of has its own rule and its own law to it. So mm. if you go around screwing with that, eventually, at what point does it stop being Assassin's Creed and starts being inspired by Assassin's Creed? And that's where the issue lies with a lot of these movies that they don't technically fulfill what you as a gamer want to see as a movie. It's more of a inspiration by a game and that's about it. Yeah. But like there are like personally for me, like the film, considering I've played the I've played the games, I'm so familiar with the story. For me, I'd have to give it either um I'd have to give it a 5 out of 10, just because it was an attempt, but it was not well executed by any means for me. No, but then there have been some games that have been modified completely in terms of a movie, but they still worked out quite well by spawning quite a big franchise, namely the Resident Evil franchise. Like, I've lost track how many goddamn movies there are, Oh and yet it is so damn disjointed from the original game that at what point does the movie create a game based on itself, which is even more of a, it's more of a mind fudgery, if anything else, because it's technically meant to be inspired by the game, but then the game gets inspired by the movie that's inspired by the game. Yeah, like with, with Resident Evil, it's... It's a fiddly one. Like the first, like one or two movies, I was pretty happy with. I still think they're really cool. But at the same time, with like changing the characters and such, like prime example here, like so many of the characters were changed. I think it wasn't just the T virus, as far as I know. There was another virus which was cut out completely, mm -hmm. and there's about fifty percent of the game which was cut. I think for the films. Yes. And to be honest, it was after maybe either about two or three. The, those films afterwards, I got completely lost. I just couldn't follow it. It just felt like it was more doing it for a kind of cash grab, to be honest. But, but this is what is the biggest issue, is that that's where a lot of these so-called video game movies are trying to do. It's not in terms of actually doing anything for the fan base, as we always hope. It's about trying to milk as much money out of certain merchandise or fandom because that's what we do we always like to find new stuff based on the things that we are fans of it's the way it all works but then there are movies that you just really 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 need one of those gadgets for men and black to wipe your memory in ever knowing that they exist so we're getting into the things that just should not have been made. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah. The... Where, where are we going with this now? Super Mario Brothers. Now, I've never watched it, but it is just a... No, no, no. no. Oh, God, it is a glory hole of cringe. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's poor chase and wording on my part. I do admit that. But... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, when yeah. you look at this, oh, like, hey, but why does Luigi not have a mustache? Luigi looks like he's barely gone through through pu puberty, and Mario looks like he's gone through Vietnam and World War Two in about a week. I just, it, yeah, just that's the first complaint. Why does Luigi not have a mustache? That's like the most defining feature they have. I know, I know, but they don't even. I don't think they even have the like actual hats, like. Their jumpsuits are... they got jumpsuits on. They don't have jumpsuits. It's overalls. They're plumbers. And you have, like, the weird little... Uh, like, the weird little mushroom things. I can't remember what they're called. What are they called? Do you remember? What, the mushroom men? I think so, because, like... I think it was, like, these jumping mushrooms which would turn into dinosaurs for some oh, reason. Oh, no, the Gumbers. The no, Gumbers. the Gumbers. That's it. Yeah. Here we go, right, let's have a look at the gloriness that is a Goomba. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, just, just a second, Boris. Like, do, the, do the people a favour, can you say Goomba? What's a Goomba? Good boy. <laughs> yeah, look so, at this thing. Just the, so whole the, the first <laughs> thing that comes to my head 
is yeah. oh I can never what? You know, in Beetlejuice, at the very end of the movie, he miffs off a guy that's on the way to hell that's a voodoo priest, and he sprinkles, yeah. that shrinks his head. That's what comes to my mind. No, I was thinking, I was thinking of, like, more of, uh, you remember the lizard in Spider-Man, was it in Spider-Man 2? No, it was in Spider-Man 1. Yeah, the lizard in, like, the amazing Spider-Man 1, that's, like, yeah. it's kind of like his, it's kind of like his, like, distant brother twice removed, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh god it's like his florida cousin <laughs> more like louisiana oh yeah, by the way that's... no offense to anybody in america i'm just doing comparisons if you want louisiana Devon. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i'm pretty sure boris says it all here it's just Crap idea. yeah yeah totally agree boris yeah. but the thing is like I think they changed so much about this movie. I don't even know what the plot... The only thing that I know is the fact that it's literally just two plumbers that are trying to save the world from an invasion <laughs> from a parallel universe where the Goombas come from. But I don't think there's any indication there's a Bowser, as far as I'm aware. There's no Princess Peach. There's no Toad, because there's obviously that weird like guy that in the Mushroom Kingdom called Toad. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know, like... Why? Like, yeah. But the thing that I find so bizarre is the fact that this film was so bad that it had so little impact on the franchise because Mario is still existing, like, 20, maybe 30 years later now. Yeah, well, obviously, you've like, had, like, Mario Kart and all that, which yeah. I... Which, like, I'm sorry to everybody watching. I'm not a fan of Mario, and I never will be. I just, it, it nothing wrong with it. It, just, it doesn't interest me. It doesn't do anything for me. Let's go, woo! Um, but be, ca be careful, copyright. Ah, <laughs> uh, be fine. But then, to be fair, we have had a very interesting game to begin with in itself called Tomb Raider, which, when it first came out, it was a classic. But it was so flawed in terms of the, the graphics. Yes, Jack is doing sign language, but I shall because explain of the old the old Nint Nintendo. So you carry on. Well, yeah, I yeah. I mean, this is in the depth. <laughs> I love the, the, this. This became a meme in itself. Well, the fact that I found the uh, the perfect image and it's literally her face palming was the best bit of all. Yeah, I remember playing this when I was younger as well. I remember uh, this. The thing is, poor old Lara Croft has always been a bit disproportionate. It's only been like the recent games where she actually looks semi-human. Because when you get to the PlayStation version, yes, yeah, she's been a bit more humanised, but not by much. And uh, Let me show you what I mean by that. So, like I say, she looks a bit more human, but again... But then again, like, though, you had, you had to work with what you had back then, though, PS, with well, PlayStation, be fair. It's not even that. You can tell she's over-the-top sexualized because the size of her waist is, like, thinner than, like, my hands doing that. Oh, yeah, was it, like, four-inch waist? Probably two. But <laughs> then it sort of makes you wonder, I wonder why they got... Who was it again for Lara Croft in the original movie? Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Yeah, see, she's an she's a reasonable actress, and I say reasonable, but the look on her face in this image, it says it all. It says that it's more as a way of her just getting some money instead of actually being interested in the role. She looks so miffed off there. Yeah, like, but mind you, if you even take the character of Lara Croft, I was having a conversation with somebody at work uh, the other day about this very film, and it was just um, saying, obviously, it's like for strong female empowerment and everything like that, which nothing wrong with that. We need a lot more like female protagonists. Yeah. Like now, we need some of that, and well, be fair, villains as well, villainesses, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them. But then again, with Lara Croft, with the story, is there really much to her? Really? No. I mean, this, the irony is that both her and Indiana Jones both have the exact same problem, is the fact that no matter 
what she does in the movie, it has no impact on the bad guys because they still get hurt or whatever via the booby traps in the place that they go and excavate or treasure hunt. Yeah, of course. So it's a very odd movie to try and redo. I mean, they did do a modern... They did do one last year or was it the year before? I think it was last year. I think so. And the actress in it... I can never remember her name, but she hasn't done much since. No. But she does seem to have a bit more of a rustic style to her in terms of how they did the actual movie. Yeah. Like, they actually tried to make it seem like she actually has some MacGyverish skills in terms of trying to keep herself alive while being hunted down and trying to treasure hunt. That's kind of the whole point of Lara Croft. Yeah. But... Let's say we were to do a video game movie at all. What would be the first movie you'd want to do full stop? Would there be much in the way of plot changes compared to the movie? And what's the one thing that you have to keep saying from the games and the movie? <laughs> well, it's just like even like the the first thing is it's going to have to be a remake, first of all, which Assassin's Creed got to be remade and I have to do it. Um, a few other games which I've played. I know there's a themed inspired by Grand Theft Auto, which is coming out very soon, which is, is it Freeman? Freeman. It's got Brian Reynolds in. Yeah. That, yeah, that's the one. Just I would love to see a proper Grand Theft Auto inspired game. But then again, you kind of like, Playing for what you got. If like anything which is really open world is going to be very uh, difficult to do because there's so much to it. So with that, when it comes to Assa when it comes to Assassin's Creed, for me, I got to go off the original storyline, the original plot, of the Animus, the pieces of Eden. Go through the whole lineage and take the time to explain it. But when it comes to a film, you can't do it just in one film. You would have to do it in at least about what twenty odd. So if you're gonna like do it, maybe in six, have a saga. Um, for me, that's gonna be the first thing. But they did at least in that film keep a main line in there, which is uh, nothing is true, everything is permitted. So which doesn't really make much sense. But then again, it's it, it's the game. Um, so it's kind of the premise of like everything's a secret, so you find out the truth. Uh, all that kind of premise. So that's probably like the biggest, like number one game that I want to see redone, but redone right. Uh, hopefully by Ubisoft properly. But what is probably a uh, main game that either you might want to see redone or one that you want to have made that has not been done yet? Uh, oh. I don't know. I mean,. There are so many different games that have been done over the years. I would love to try and see if they could ever redo Mario Brothers, only just because like, it is such a bizarre game in itself that it makes little to no sense, to the point where I think it's like last year or the year before, they got this new mod in the game where if Bowser gets this special crown, it turns him into Bowsette, which is literally a female... It looks like Princess Peach, but it's Bowser as a like, Princess Peach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell were they on? This is for kids. <laughs> this is for kids, these games. I mean, I saw a video the other day. This artist had done, like, a really gory animation, like, to try and showcase like this transformation between Bowser and Bowsette. It's so obscure. I'll have to show you it later. But the whole concept in itself that this six foot, maybe seven foot turtle with spikes or whatever turns into an overly sexualized blonde female that's still a turtle to a degree because he's still... He or she still has the turtle on the back and is wearing a big black dress. And that's about it. But it's still Bowser, but with the body of Princess Peach. God knows how long. There's been loads of spin-offs. 
I'm sure pretty much everybody has played Sonic. <laughs> yes. I mean, there's been TV series, there's been card games, there's been numerous actual games itself. And it's actually quite a fairly interesting um, franchise. Yeah. But I'm a bit hesitant as to where it's going to go in terms of like it being a franchise because... Where they left things off in the movie is that you get Tails appears on Earth to hunt down Sonic. So whether or not they'll make Tails to be a bad guy briefly and then make him good guy best friends like they are in the game, I don't know. But then there was... Yeah, carry on. There was a TV series back in the early 2000s where Sonic had... Like a weird ability via the Chaos Emeralds. I mean, there's probably someone watching this that will probably understand this a lot more than I do. But essentially, there was all these different emeralds that allowed Sonic to increase to certain speeds, but it also had a drawback. I mean, I have no idea if they'd add that to the next movie, because with the movie that they brought out, the rings were actually something useful because they were actually like teleportation things. It was like trying to mimic... Doctor Strange, like, sling ring type thing. But, again, it's it's hard to try and rationalise Sonic the Hedgehog when the entire thing is that he just runs really quick and battles a guy with a dodgy moustache and a big belly. Well, what, what have you got, really? Yeah. But although, there's a game which I would be desperate to see made... And it was one of my favorite games on PlayStation 2. Some of you guys might remember who were watching this after the fact, but Shadow the Hedgehog. There, I can't remember what the title was called, but Shadow the Hedgehog. It was a freaking yes. amazing game. I did it with like guns, battling demons. For a yeah. game, it's really dark, but mm. because obviously he's a very dark character, so it is it's a brilliant game. I advise anybody who's still got an old console to play it because it's it's brilliant but this is it like there are some games out there that have been around for so long that the franchise has spawned off into so many different things sonic's got his own comic series like i say he's had quite a few tv series it it's hard to try and translate properly to movies because it's hard. I mean, even the film itself couldn't rationalise the idea of a blue hedgehog that ran at God knows how quick. I think, to be fair, the movie itself was only saved because it had Jim Carrey in. And I'm sure a lot of people probably disagree with me, but it's the attitude, the funkiness, the wackiness that he brings to every role is what makes it a more intriguing movie and gives you more of a reason to stay, even if it's not a movie that you're actually that into. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I can't really think of anything else to add to this episode. Do you, dude? Um, Not particularly. It's just with, like, just with, like, video games, it's such a dodgy, it's such a dodgy place. There's certain rules which you have to play by, and we've seen too many instances where the rules have all been scrapped and it's just been changed completely. So, but at the same time, I'm hoping it's not going to be too stagnant as there's so many other games out there, such as one other one, which I would love to see done. I don't know if it'd be able to be done as more kind of PG, maybe, or just like you. I'm not too sure, but something which I would like, a a guilty pleasure of a game which I used to play, Spyro. Yeah, no, that could, that would be quite an intriguing one. It was a, it was a bit rubbish for me, but it's definitely a guilty pleasure. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, it could work, to be fair, because obviously everyone had their obsession with How to Train Your Dragon when that first came out as a movie. I think, to be fair, any movie that's got dragons in, everybody's going to love regardless. Yeah, apart from Skyrim, I didn't see... I didn't, even though it's not from a movie or whatever, but I didn't see the appeal of Skyrim, personally. Just me. Yeah. Don't, don't don't hurt me in the comments section. I do have feelings. I have a family. <laughs> but there we go. That's pretty much it for this week's episode. It's yeah. going, to be, going to be my topic for next week, and I want to delve into a classic TV series that was in America in the late 80s, early 90s 
called Quantum Leap. Now, it's a very interesting series in terms of time travel, which is why I want to talk about it, because I love time travel, as you may have seen in my Doctor Who episode. Yeah. And I don't want to spoil anything, because that's why you're here, to actually have a watch. So, it's goodbye from Ben, it's goodbye from Boris, uh, and it's goodbye from Jack. Yeah, so bye-bye from me. But Boris, do you have anything that you want to say to everybody? No one speaks. Shut your cake, old Boris. <laughs> anyway, oh. anyway guys, watching. so we'll be so we'll be back with Ben's topic for next week. I'm going to be coming up with a few different things during the week. Hopefully, for some solo videos. But until then, catch you next Saturday. Stay safe. See you soon. Bye.